This happened when I was younger and in college and thus went to parties a whole lot more often. My university, though quite a large one in a bustling college town, was practically set out in the middle nowhere. While most of the parties were held on campus or in town, occasionally some really wild parties would be held off campus. Those generally had more drug use or things like that going on. They were safer to hold out in the middle of nowhere because you were less likely to bother neighbors and thus much less likely to have the police called to the party for any reason. I had heard about this party from a frat buddy of mine. He said it was being given by a friend of his in a house that his rich parents owned. They were out of the country for a while and he wanted to throw the most memorable party that he possibly could. I couldn't make it as early to the party as he was leaving, so he told me he would give me directions so that I could drive myself out there. My buddy gave me what I guess he thought were good directions and even drew a little map with how to get there. Apparently, it would take at least an hour for me to drive, which I wasn't looking forward to. I definitely wasn't rich and owned an old car that I was always afraid would break down on me at some point, but I told him that I would be there. It was already dark outside when I left, but it wasn't too late at night. However, to make matters worse, it seemed like it was going to storm too. It wasn't raining yet, for which I was thankful, but there was plenty of thunder and lightning. I hated driving in the rain, so I tried to drive a little faster so I could hopefully get to the party before the storm broke. It was difficult finding a way to this place. Now I knew that the guy's house was up on a hill. It was supposed to have been built with a log cabin sort of look to it. It was a vacation home that the barely even used, but I guess when they wanted to, they wanted to have the feeling of being isolated from the world. There were several times that I think I might have missed the turnoff to head up into the hills. It was very hard to see the street signs. Also, a few times, there weren't any street signs. There were just roads that pulled off onto a hill. I kept wondering if maybe one of them was the road that I was supposed to turn on. I couldn't really think that my frat buddy was the best guy in the world at giving directions. I finally pulled off in a road that wasn't my road. The reason I did this is because I had been out for way too long and I was sure that I missed the turn. I thought I would backtrack a little bit. However, I needed somewhere to turn around. I figured that I would find a driveway somewhere and just pull in and out of that. No sooner had I began driving on the hill, but the rain finally began to come down, and it began coming down pretty hard. That was all I needed to happen. It was already dark and so hard to see on this road, it became nearly impossible to see after that. My headlights were as much of a hindrance as they were helpful. I kept driving, not coming up to any driveways or homes at all. I was wondering if the road was too small to make a three-point turnabout or not. That was when I saw something up ahead of me. There was a gate blocking the road. I had no choice but to stop at the gate, however. Looking at the road, it looked like it had widened enough right before the gate so that I could at least make an effort to turn around. Right then, I was startled by a pounding on my window. I turned and I saw some guy standing outside of my car door in the rain. He was wearing a raincoat and he was carrying a flashlight, but I couldn't see much of him because he began shining the light on me, blinding me at first. "'You're not supposed to hear!' he yelled at me. "'Get the hell out of here!' I kept trying to maneuver my car around and now it was even more difficult with him standing there. Plus he kept yelling at me to get the hell out, so I was panicked. He kept pounding his fist on the window while screaming at me. I thought that was bad, but when I had the care half turned around, my headlights shined into the trees on the side of the road. There were two more people in raincoats standing there. They didn't look very pleased and were carrying what I thought were guns. That sent my panic up so much higher. Get the hell out of here, he kept yelling, and believe me, I was trying. It wasn't easy, though. I was so scared that I almost didn't care if I hit the guy or not. When I got my car around as much as I could, I turned the wheel as sharply as I could, and I hit the gas. It took a moment, likely because the dirt road was so wet, but I was finally able to pull away from this scary guy and his friends. I drove off of that road then as quickly as I could. When I got to the main road, I was thankful as hell to be off of that hill. I just decided to skip the party and head back to campus where I was safe. My frat buddy wondered, of course, why I never made it to the party. I told him, but he didn't believe me for some reason. He just thought I decided not to go and was making excuses. I told the story several times in his presence, and he never believed it. I grew up in the same house for my entire childhood. My parents had bought it before I was born, and they lived in it until they passed away. 
Right now, my siblings and I all own the house, although no one currently lives in. I had my own bedroom growing up, too. This was great to never have to share a room with someone else, but sometimes it could be a little scary to have one's own room, and this story was the scariest thing that had happened in that room. I do remember, though, that although I always had my own bedroom, I did change rooms with my younger sister at one point. My parents didn't tell us why they were making the change at the time. On occasion, I would get a really uneasy feeling when I was alone in the newer bedroom. It would come out of nowhere, and it would just linger on for a bit. It wasn't ever anything serious, though. When I was 16 years old, I was laying in my bed reading. When I got too tired to do any more reading, I turned the lights off and tried to go to sleep. However, when I did this, that uneasy feeling that I would sometimes get came back, and for some reason I had this desire to go and open my closet door and check in there before going back to bed. It was a little nighttime ritual that I had not done in a long time, but normally after I had, I would drift off to sleep with no problem. Obviously nothing was in the closet when I checked. So I went back into bed and turned my lamp off. I laid on my side, which is how I slept, facing the window which looked out into the backyard of the house. I immediately jumped out of bed and screamed as loud as I could. There was someone standing in the backyard looking into my bedroom window. I couldn't make it out perfectly, but it was the top half of a human face from the nose on up. And whoever it was, they were looking right at me. I switched on my lamp, and by the time my eye were adjusted, the man was gone. My mom and dad both came running into the room, asking me what was wrong. When I explained it to them, they almost seemed relieved. However, my dad told my mom that he would go and check out the backyard, just to be sure. I wasn't sure what he meant by that. Finally, my mom told me why it was that she had switched rooms with my younger sister. Apparently, for a long period of time, my younger sister had complained about some guy watching her from the window. She never saw his full face, just the top half of his face, but she always saw the eyes looking at her. However, when my dad would go out and check the backyard, there was never anyone there. My parents had chalked the experiences up to my younger sister's imagination. They thought if they switched bedrooms, the bedroom I was previously in was on the second floor, that my younger sister would stop imaging things. After switching, she never mentioned the person looking in her window ever again, and that was years and years before this happened. My parents eventually mostly forgot about it. My dad came back and confirmed that there was no one in the backyard. They asked me if my younger sister had told me about this before, and I told them no. I had never even suspected such a thing. They seemed a bit doubtful, but also mildly freaked out that this had happened again. When I mentioned it to my younger sister, she definitely remembered it. She had been much younger when it had happened, but said that face was burned into her memory. Although I never saw the face again, we were both sure there was something supernatural happening in our backyard. Well, this is probably the worst thing that happened to me in my life. It happened to me when I was simply going out for a walk. I live out in the mountains, in a very nice house. I enjoyed very much taking walks in the wilderness. On this day, I got some water and a little food for a snack in my bag. I set out to go for a walk in the woods. Now, I have done this many, many times before, so it's very hard to explain what happened. To this day, I cannot explain it. I was very familiar with the territory that I was in. However, I don't know how it happened, but I took a wrong turn somewhere. I really have absolutely no memory of how I did this, but I began to notice that the wilderness was a lot different than I had noticed before. It didn't take me too long to realize that I had gone the wrong way. So I turned around and I tried to backtrack to the area I am familiar with. Well, turning around and backtracking didn't work. If anything, I think it made things a lot more difficult, even when I was going back over what I thought was the area that I had previously gone over. I wasn't sure that I was. Nothing ever looked familiar, and I became very, very worried that I had made another wrong turn. It didn't take long for me to have to admit to myself that I was lost and I was in a very bad place to be lost in. With the mountains and the forests and everything in this area, getting lost could be a death sentence. However, I wasn't too worried at first. I hadn't been out very long and I felt that I could probably quickly find my way back to an area I was familiar with. As time went on, I found that I was not going to find my way back home quickly. I think the more that I tried to actually do this, the more that I found myself getting more lost. So as the day got later and later, and I kept not recognizing anything, I began to worry. 
The biggest worry happened when it began to get dark outside. Despite having no idea where I was, I knew that there would be no way I was going to find my way home in the dark. However, I didn't have a flashlight on me, and eventually it was difficult to see much of anything. That is when I knew that would have to try and settle down for the night. I tried to find some place that would be safe and warm, but that was obviously hard to do. I just found the best place that I could and realized I had to hunker down. I knew that it was going to be quite a horrible night, and it really was. Being cold and alone and lost was utterly terrifying, and I had never slept on the ground before like this. But mostly at the time, I was thinking about how I would obviously be able to get home the next day. I slept very poorly that night, as one would expect. But either way, I was happy to be able to have light again in the morning. I set out hoping that I would be able to find my way to somewhere, anywhere, even a road or a path. This quickly proved that it was not going to be a winning strategy for me. My second day out in the wood turned out a lot like the first one. I couldn't find anything that seemed familiar to me, and I couldn't find any sign of civilization. Also, the meager about of water that I had was mostly gone, and I knew I would have to find a creek if I didn't want to die of dehydration. So pretty much like the first day, it began getting dark before I could find my way out of the mountains and woods. For a second time, the nighttime was coming and I hadn't made any headway getting out of the mountains, so I had to find another place to try and hunker down and keep warm for the night. Like the previous night, I knew that it was going to be pretty cold, so I knew I was in for something that wasn't going to be fun. There was something different about the second night than the first one, though. Although I slept badly the first night, it was mostly because of the weather and discomfort. But the second night was different. I kept hearing sounds like someone or something was out in the woods. I wasn't sure how to tell if it was a person or if it was an animal. I was just a hiker, not a hunter or anyone with that sort of knowledge. But whatever it was, it seemed like it was sticking around in the area that I was in for a long time. However, being so dark, I was not able to see anything or anyone, and I didn't want to call out. I figured if it was someone who could have helped me, they would have known I was there already. At some point, due to sheer tiredness, I must have dozed off. After that, I slept a lot more soundly than I had the night before. When I finally woke up, I noticed that the sun had been up for a little while. At first, I was relieved to have slept well, but that didn't last very long. When I got up, I noticed that there were some twigs on the ground. They were arranged in such a way that they spelled out a letter X on the ground and they were arranged in such a way that it couldn't have happened by chance, and it couldn't have been an animal. It was a neat letter X that I had known hadn't been there the night before. At that point, I was already a bit dried out from not having any water left over, and although I slept deeply, I was still pretty tired. I was worried about how long I could survive out here on my own against the elements. The last thing I needed was some strange or crazy person out here with me. So on the third day, I just tried even harder to try and find my way out of the area. I wasn't too worried about anything as long as it was light outside. It was incredibly bright outside, and I hadn't seen anyone out in the woods yet. I also didn't hear anyone out there with me at all during the day. After a while, I eventually found a really small stream. I was able to get some water to drink, which was the best thing at the moment. I was still hungry, but there wasn't much I could do about that. The stream led to a creek, but that didn't help me very much. I didn't seem like I was any closer to finding a way out of there. I didn't find my way out again that day. Once again, I had to sleep out in the woods. Only this time I was much more terrified than I had been before, the twig X being foremost in my mind. Despite being scared, I still managed to sleep on and off. I think not having had any food probably made it a lot easier. Like before, I eventually drifted off and had at least a few hours of some pretty deep sleep. I woke up the next day to something even more terrifying than the X from the previous night. Not far from where I was sleeping, there was a slaughtered rodent of some sort lying on the ground. Scrawled in the dirt was the word, leave. I got up quickly that morning and set off again, determined more than ever to get myself back to safety. I was completely terrified at that point. Obviously someone didn't want me out there any more than I wanted to be out there. Sometime in what I figure was the afternoon, I was in an open area on the side of a hill. That was when I saw someone emerge from the trees. I thought back to the X, to the rodent, and to the leave message, and I was about to turn and run off before I heard them call out my name. And then I heard them yell to someone else. I am glad I didn't run off because there had been a search party put together to come out and find me. They didn't have the highest hopes because I had been gone for so long and were pretty surprised when they found me. 
Fortunately, they had brought some food and fresher water with them, so I was able to have that. I told them about the scary things I had seen, but most of them seemed to think I was just delirious from not having eaten in day. I knew better than that, however. I knew that there was someone out there who hadn't wanted me to be out there. I hoped they were just as happy as I was when I was gone.